So I'm going to call this meeting to order, the Conway Select Board, Monday, November 23rd, and it is now 6.03 uh, to be a Zoom, and uh, we're recording it, and it will be available both on cable channels 23 and, uh, and possibly 12 uh, on your cable dial, and it will be available on our video on demand through our YouTube channel that's called FCAT Media, so people can watch it there. But if you're hearing this message, you already are looking at it. So we have minutes to approve from the last meeting. Did everybody get a chance to look at them? Yep. They look good? Mm-hmm. Any, no corrections? Is good, Phil? So I'm going to make a motion that we accept the minutes of the last meeting. Thank you. And uh, so all in favor, and we all say aye. So mm -hmm. done. Uh, we have three vendor warrants that we, three warrants that we need to approve. The first one is a vendor warrant for 111470 and 68 cents. A payroll warrant for 107,030 and 41 cents, and a payroll deduction warrant for 26,999 and 28 cents. So, can we get a motion to approve those warrants? Or if I make a motion, can I get a second? Thank you. All in favor? Yeah, they're fine. Okay, uh, meetings attended by select board members over the last two weeks. So, Erica, you usually go first. Um, no meetings attended by, by me, um, but I did walk in the first 10 miles of Monty's March today with um, Congressman Jim McGovern. And I'm going to be doing uh, 15 miles with him tomorrow. So if there's anything that um, I should be talking to him about, particularly as regards the town of Conway. I'm happy to bring that up with him. Great. Well, well Jim isn't actually our rep, but he is, you know, well, a, Massachusetts. A, a more accessible rep than our rep. Uh, and and uh, Natalie Blay will also probably be marching there. And, yes, uh, yes. And, I should see her tomorrow. And so she is our, our, our state rep. And, uh, and I don't know about Paul Mark and Joe. Summerford and some of the other local reps that are out there all the yeah, time. Yeah, I expect to see so, some of them tomorrow. Yeah. Natalie, sure. Great. Say hi to Natalie. We all, you know, see her at various events. Okay, uh, Phil. Yeah, I unfortunately had a lot of meetings. Um, uh, so I'll just start the Conway Grammar School meeting. Um, and then there was a uh, initial budget meeting before that for the initial rollout of what passes for our budget right now, which of course is totally incomplete, um, um, just on the revenue side uh, and also on the expenses side. But the the thing that jumped out at me during that the the budget meeting was the uh, was the appearance of a sixty thousand dollar expense, sixty thousand plus expense for a replacement of the emergency generator at the school with the, and the school is also the town emergency shelter. And so um, in, in, in asking around, nobody had yet attempted to contact anybody EMS wise or anything to look into grant money since it's the emergency shelter. And then the other thing was that the generator still works. It's just the, the expiration date has come and gone and it's due to get replaced. But it's just like our boy, you know, we have a capital stabilization count for that grammar school. We're the only elementary school in the area, so I'm told, that has its own capital stabilization count, which is wonderful. Um, and and we have that. That's you know, our boilers are well past their expiration date, but they work. So we have two hundred thousand dollars in a stabilization count to pay for boilers in case they explode or need to be replaced imminently. We we have the money. Um, and the, uh, the, so I, I suggested the same concept be applied to the generator if we have to fund it ourselves, but we try to fund it elsewhere. In the meantime, I have it, I, I sent our emergency director Murphy a text and tried calling. I've received no response 
Um, I did speak with our fire chief about it. He says that it seems fine to him. It should be replaced. But if we can save it, put a squirrel of money, a little bit of money away for a couple of years first, he thinks that's the, a, a good way to go. So, um, so just keep that on. Because if that has to come out of the school budget, um, $60,000 is uh, more than 2% increased in, in our school budget just for that. And, um, you know, it's, you never want to have to lay off a staff member so you can pay for a generator. That would just really be crappy. Um, and we're not being forced to replace it? It's just... We're not being forced to replace it, but it's the kind of thing that it, you have to have, um, both for the children. Um, and because power does go out, it does, you know, it, it, it trips on every year um, at some point or another. And plus for the shelter purpose, which is really important too, um, um, you know, it has to have a generator. And I think because it's a shelter by law, we're required to have a generator for it actually. Um, so, uh, you know, so this is, this might be Tom Hutchinson's first heads up about this issue as well. I don't know or not, but this is definitely a thing. And, um, the, the school committee is asking that some, some, uh, somebody else pay for it. Um, uh, if at all possible, um, if it's not possible, then it's not, and then the school will pay for it, but the, whatever. So, that's one thing. Um, um, and then the, the, uh, there was a frontier school committee meeting, um, which dealt a lot with the metrics for the, for, for closures and whatnot. And there was an extensive discussion about whether or not to close or to go all remote, uh, in the week after Thanksgiving. And, uh, the, the, at that time, the school committee said, you know, we just go by the data. If, it, if we need to, we need to, but, there hadn't been plans to do so. Um, uh, and then the next day after the frontier meeting was a regional board of health meeting um, with the four town front, it's called the frontier EDS committee, which is the four towns board of health, um, which is strictly, uh, you know, and it was strictly a COVID meeting. And uh, much to my shock and dismay, um, that group, uh, you know, e e even though we worked cooperatively to come up with the metrics and the school committee had given them the, uh, the, the authority to, to, you know, to require that the school go all virtual, you know, if the metrics are, 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 pet, whatever, are, are, are met in terms of positive cases and, and this, that, and the other, um, the, they, they decided that they had a feeling that it would be better if we go all virtual for the week after Thanksgiving. And, um, so I, 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 you know, I, I think it's, it's, it's definitely a problem when, when um, your, your boards of health decide that the same rules for everybody else don't really apply when it comes to their feelings. And, you know, it, although the, the result that the, the result wasn't, uh, w wasn't one that the school committees necessarily opposed, we had talked about doing that ourselves, the rationale advanced by the, by, by the boards of health that, that, that they were afraid of. Uh, of, of excess risk due to college kids coming home to the same residences. Um, uh, we didn't agree with the, the, the school committees did not agree with the rationale uh, as advanced because there was no effort to ascertain whether or not that was a real risk or not. And in fact, in Conway, of all of the grammar school families, the number that have a returning kid coming from a residential college is very close to zero, um, if not zero. So, uh, the the um, the long and the short of it is that the the result of all that is that the school committees are putting on the agenda a vote of no confidence in the boards of health or 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 the or, or taking back the, the the their veto power over boards of health uh, rulings if the boards of health are not going to follow the same metrics that we all agreed that we would be following. And what was particularly alarming was the number of people on the boards of health, especially from other towns, um, uh, that, that were just sitting back saying, let's just go all virtual for the whole month of December. I've heard enough, you know, and just things like that where um, w the, the people on the schools uh, and to do the whole school community really got freaked out about all that, that the boards of health would consider making such decisions outside of their own criteria for those decisions um, just based on feelings and that uh, there was a real reluctance from the boards of health to even hear about the 
downstream consequences of closing schools and what all that entails. And so that, so um, I do believe I'm going to be calling into the, our board of health meeting tonight at seven o'clock. Um, if I, if, if so, um, but yeah, so, so that was a whole nother thing um, and, and is percolating up. Uh, and so, and, and then the, uh, the, um, uh, and then there was a FERC, uh, Franklin Regional Council of Government meeting as well. Um, and I did get to ask a lot of questions about that and learned a lot. So that was good. That was good. The one thing that I will say about that, that I, that, that I, that I asked about, as, as many of you know, that in, in Conway now, there's a, how, a home being built um, uh, for many millions of dollars. Is, is the, it's, there's never been a home uh, with this expense of five where mil, millions of dollars is being spent to construct a home right now. And um, we, we, we are part of the Cooperative Building Inspection Service with, with Franklin County. And I wanted to inquire whether there was some mechanism to have uh, uh, people that are spending millions of dollars to build a home pay more for building permits than people that are spending uh, less than millions of dollars to build a home. And apparently that's a, they all like that idea. And so we're gonna be trying to see if, the, but the, 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 the uh, un, 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 unfortunately it won't help the town because those building permit fees are collected by FERCA. Um, but what I did learn is that, you know, there's a, there's a consequence for our towns when, when people with that amount of money in our small town moves in, our school assessment based on the EQV factor, which is how they, uh, the state calculates it's, uh, our, our minimum contra required contribution every year to our, our regional school. Um, that is based one of uh, six, two thirds of it is based on the cumulative income of the town. So when you have a small town and someone that's building a multi multi million dollar home comes in, that actually forces the entire school contribution up, and um, for the whole town. So in Massachusetts, it's this perverse thing where rich people move into the town; it causes everybody's taxes to go up. Just people, you know, um, and, and, and what the other thing too is that it also causes our FERCOG contribution to go up. And I learned about that, that how, how, our, how, how our FERCOG contribution, the minimum town assessment for that is also based on an income factor. Um, so, yeah, um, so, so. Income or, or EQV, yeah. Phil? What's that? Income or EQV? In, in, in an income, there's an income part to that, to that calculation, Linda said. Wow. No matter if that income is earned in Massachusetts or if it's earned earned outside of the state. I have no idea how the state, but all I know is they spit it out on a computer, and, and that's and there's no human, there's no, you know, that's what it is. Um, we uh, had the same problem when Michael Kittredge moved in. Exactly. Exactly. So I so I asked whether there's some way to make that up with building inspection fees. Um, and, and, uh, yeah, but apparently, um, if there is, it would all go to FERCOG anyway. So I'll keep, keep, keep on working on that one. Um, I'm sure you have more meetings. Let's go to some more meetings. Yeah. Right. Right. And, uh, you know, we did have, did have a meeting with the Williamstown folks, uh, just a brief conversation with the, with the Williamstown folks to set up a meeting, um, about the, the uh, carbon credit, uh, uh, you know, participating in the carbon market uh, for carbon credits for our town. So we're going to be doing that November 30th as an initial meeting. So good. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, I had yeah, I'm waiting for that. <laughs> I had a few uh, cable advisory meetings. We're still in the process of writing our final franchise agreement after having a, uh, you know, completed a preliminary negotiation with, with Comcast. We'll see how that goes. I, had, I joined Phil at the Frontier EDS meeting, but I have to admit, I thought changing the two in-person days to at-home days for the kids of Frontier and Conway after thanks for that one week after Thanksgiving was a good idea. 
it Thanksgiving feels to me like a time when too many people get together with people they don't normally see every day. Uh, I went to another meeting with Phil that he didn't mention, so um, he may. Oh want yeah, to, he may want to talk about this one. Go ahead. Uh, go no, ahead. no, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Well, we we've both been attending a capital improvement uh, a committee for Frontier, and right now yeah. the the hot issue is the track and yes. how much it's going to cost, and we're looking at we're looking at we're going to have to spend more money for the track than we actually budgeted, and wondering. How we're going to find that additional the additional funds, but so I don't know if you yeah. add more to that. So the the good news to that is that the frontier um, uh, the, the, the the amount of uh, the the town calls it free cash for for the, the schools called E and D, um, <laughs> but the the amount of uh, E and D is going to be known um, in in a week. And so that'll that'll go a long way to answer the question about whether the amount that we've that the towns have voted for to bond for the track, whether 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 the capital committee is going to need to go back to the towns for more or, or whether there's enough E&D um, that you know, free cash or whatever to pay for it. And because the difference is under two hundred thousand um, dollars, we suspect that the E&D is going to go a long ways and maybe all the way. Um, so, uh, yeah, what else did I want to say about that? Um, yeah, I forget. All right. Good. I'll remember a little bit. And we had one more uh, Conservation Commission inspection of the solar project down in Southern Conway. Um, and construction is nearing completion with all of the arrays in place. And, and uh, they're buttoning it up for winter. And we're going to have at least one more inspection, you know, after the winter. So, uh, but it's but it's going well. So those oh, yes. are so that that reminds. So the thing that I wanted to say about uh, on the capital thing is that the school committee did vote to move to move forward with the the playground, uh, whatever the 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 engineers d developed the bidding documents for that, and that's all going out to bid. Um, as we speak now, and the construction is due to be done um, next year. So that, that's what I wanted to say about that, too. The playground is happening, too, Great. amongst everything else. So we have some old business. But, but Charlie, since you guys are here waiting patiently, why don't we deal with your new business first? Is that okay with you? Uh, that's fine with me, but I'll, I'll let Chris, who's with us here, take the lead on this because he's the number one man on our team that's working on this on our board. Great. Well, the, the floor is yours. Well, I'm, I'm actually going to ask Patrick to lead up. Lead us up. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay with you, Patrick, and then I'll. Yeah, I'll ha you. happy to. Um, okay. to Patrick McCoy, I live in West Waitley. I'm also a member of the Deerfield River Watershed Association along with Chris and Charlie. Um, appreciate you meeting with us tonight to discuss our interest in um, pursuing designation of the Deerfield River and associated tributaries uh, for national and wild, uh, national wild and scenic designation through the National Park Service. Um, we shared a, a fact sheet uh, in advance of the meeting, but are happy to go through that Chris um, and members of the board have been meeting with other municipalities in the Watershed Association to get initial interest in this initiative. And we're happy to say at this point, six other towns have signed on in the form of letters of support to pursue to the next step. Um, so wanted to bring this to Conway to see what questions you have and see what we may be able to do and working together and moving forward. So with that, Chris, I'll turn it to you. Okay, I'm going to just take you through, if, if it's okay, a, a brief kind of synopsis of, of what we're proposing. Um, and again, this is a new initiative uh, to look at whether certain segments of the Deerfield River could be designated as a national wild and scenic river. And as you undoubtedly know, the Deerfield River is an incredible um, resource and natural asset for our region and our communities. It has some of the best uh, whitewater uh, boating and rafting in the entire Northeast, uh, excellent trout fishing, some say among the best in the, in the East. And it also has uh, historic significance with the uh, Buck Trail um, running along the length of it. Um, 
So we felt like uh, designation of the river under this program could provide um, a number of benefits to the region. And most notably, uh, the key benefits would be protecting the river from uh, new federally permitted dams and um, providing federal grant funds for community-based river restoration or improvement projects. And just to elaborate on, on those points a little bit, uh, there was, as you may know, um, back in time, I guess in the 70s, uh, a dam proposed for the section of the Deerfield River that runs through um, your community. Uh, I think it was referred to as the number one dam. And that dam uh, did not get built, um, but that would have flooded the entire section that runs, um, you know, through the, from Bardwell's Ferry downstream. Um, so this kind of uh, designation would um, protect against that kind of thing happening to the sections of the river that are still uh, free flowing and, and wild, um, of which there are several um, on the river, although it's very heavily dammed river, there's quite a few sections that are still uh, free flowing. And then in terms of the federal grant funds, um, that can be fairly significant, actually. Um, I worked um, earlier in my career on protecting the Westfield River as a national wild and scenic river. And that's um, a river just to the south of your watershed, as many of your neighboring communities engaged with it, um, communities like Cummington and Chesterfield and uh, Savoy. And um, that river, uh, for example, gets about $225,000 um, per year in federal grant monies, and it gets then um, expended and allocated by a wild and scenic uh, river committee that's made up of local representatives. And they do all kinds of projects with that. Um, sometimes it has to do with restoring um, the river bank or uh, creating a trail um, or um, doing all kinds of water quality um, monitoring and, and restoration work. So um, that's something that we think would be beneficial to communities in, in this area and, and would be one of the, one of the potential outcomes. Um, so we're, we're hoping to collect at this point letters of support from select boards throughout the entire watershed, which would be to, for the purposes of, of getting um, a planning study started to really um, just investigate the possibility of this designation. And as Patrick mentioned earlier, um, I've been kind of going around the watershed one by one and meeting with communities. And to date, we've met with Deerfield, um, Shelburne, Savoy, Ashfield, Coleraine, and Buckland. And, and all six of those communities select boards have voted um, to support the, the proposal and have sent us letters of support and I'm going to I'm going to meet with every single one of the communities in the watershed in, in both Massachusetts and in Vermont um, to make sure that we have really everybody on board <clears throat> before um, going further with this. And I would I would make um, note of the fact that there there's no cost to your community for this initiative or for the designation. So that I guess that's an important question that always comes up. Um, yeah, that's a very important part. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that Usually the first question I get asked. No, that's uh, good. That was good. That was good. So no I, got my attention on, I got my attention on that one. <laughs> um, so just quickly, how, how the river gets designated, it's a very sort of locally driven process again. So the first step is, as, a, as we're doing, uh, is to get the support from the boards of selectmen in the communities in the watershed. Once we have that, we would go to our uh, members of Congress and we would ask them to file what's called a study bill, uh, which would fund um, a study to further investigate this designation. It would look at things like which segments of the river are eligible um, for designation. Uh, we'd look at the characteristics of the river and see if it qualifies for designation. Um, we have a pretty good sense of that already, but the study would, would kind of confirm some of this. Um, and then, um, you know, once we once we get that going, we would set up a committee of local representatives that would um, be probably at least one from each community that that would guide and oversee the work. And so you'd have ongoing involvement in the process. Um, and I want to just mention that, um, you know, looking at the river to this point, uh, there's been a national study of, of wild and scenic rivers that have potential for designation. And, 
the Deerfield has been um, identified as, as a river that, that has segments that are eligible. And two of the key segments are actually in your community. The, the segment of the main stem from Bargwell's Ferry going downstream to Deerfield and the South River, which is a main tributary, um, are both uh, identified in what's called the National Rivers Inventory as potential um, ha having the characteristics and the qualities uh, needed for wild and scenic protection. So the, the once that study gets gets completed, there, it's, it could be as long as a couple of years to do the study. Um, then we would go back to Congress again, um, assuming the communities are in support uh, of, of pursuing this further, uh, and we would ask Congress to 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 make the formal designation. Um, and, and then we could potentially be eligible for for the funding that I that I mentioned. So we ha we ha did put together and and Patrick mentioned I hope you've seen it um, the fact sheet that has a lot more information about some of these issues. I don't know if you had a chance to look at that, but I'm happy to maybe at this point just take questions that you might have. Um, uh, anything that you're you're wondering about. I have one that I'm sure Phil has some, but uh, uh, your fact sheet was excellent, and it really answered a lot of the issues that people would want to know about. Um, okay. I really appreciated that. But um, the, the one problem that we've been having that we have in our talk about in our meetings are are people the way people get access to the water, where they park, you know, how you deal with trash, um, um, you know, plus the you know the people that need to get rescued but but there this summer this last summer during covid especially there was a lot of people looking for local access and we had a lot of people using using the the section from bardswell ferry down here in conway would this have any impact on that well i think it might give you some resources to help manage the situation going forward um, I, I recognize that that it was an issue this summer. I'm, I'm an active river user myself, and I noticed a lot more traffic on the river. And I noticed the, um, the tubing company in, Col in Conway that is renting out tubes and, and bringing people down um, to the South River confluence. That was uh, a little bit of an eye opener for me to see how many people were going down there um, and the traffic. So I. I certainly recognize that that's an issue. It's an issue in other communities as well. And um, as I mentioned, this this planning study would, would help you to get the resources to kind of address what are possible solutions for better management of the river. And then the grant money, once it becomes available, could potentially fund things like um, maybe making improvements to river access areas. Um, perhaps they're, you know, you wanna have better parking in certain areas. Um, or, or some some issues like that could be addressed. So I think it's it's generally a good thing for communities to help with this where we, where you might not have any resources otherwise to do it. We don't. Uh, this is a big issue for us and for Deerfield because Charlemont is trying to shut down their access to the common tubing sections of, of, of the river coming down from Zor Gap. And, and, and as those people get displaced from from that river, they're looking elsewhere, and we seem to be ground zero. And and it's great to have people come to Conway, and the tubing company is successful, and that's all good. But it but it it raises problems too. So this would be wonderful to get help there. Great. But I mean, a, a lot of our problems we can't you know our our roads the width of our roads is pre-established by bedrock and guardrails, and um, and the you know the, there's a. Uh, the, there, there is no more part, you know, what we could use a sanitation service, we could use additional uh, compensation, but um, and trash removal or whatever, but are actually that that tubing company, you know, they do do a lot of trash removal. Um, dirt. So although the traffic problems were much worse, the litter problem wasn't that much worse. Mm. Um, so but the uh, but it, uh, Bob, Bob is right that the recreational wise it is a balloon from, from Charlemont to Deerfield is a balloon. And when you squeeze it in Charlemont, it, it, it all comes down river in our direction. And I, so, and to that extent, like the taxpayers paid for all these fancy rec, uh, you know, parking areas in Charlemont and for local government to be able to shut that down. Um, and, uh, because, and a lot of it, it, 
you know, for, for there to be able, my thing is that I don't like discrimination in general, but discrimination based on where you live um, is not okay with me. And it, that there are communities on this river that, uh, that, that, that want to enact policies that are discriminatory for non-residents. Um, and I, um, you know, I'm not too in favor of that. My, my other questions though, tended to be like, what, what, what would be the impact on abutters on private landowners that abut to the South river right now? Um, many of whom have these uh, fantastic, uh, points of view. They've been living next to the river for 50 years and they can remember all the, the various, uh, uh, currents of regulatory action, how they were initially told they can't cut trees right next to the river and then cut trees right next to the river. And, you know, and they had, you know, but w would this be any impact on abutters in terms of uh, uh, raising their responsibilities or uh, anything like that? So, so that's a really good question. Um, the, the designation itself would not have any impact at all on private property or private property owners. The, um, the one thing I will say about that is that on the Westfield River, as part of the management plan that the communities ended up developing and adopting, they all decided that they wanted to have a little better river protection uh, zoning to prevent, like people building houses right on the riverbank and so forth. So they adopted some things locally. That is is purely, you know, sort of a local option. Uh, and the communities themselves would decide about what they want to do there. Um, but that's, that's how they handled it on the Westfield. Um, since that time, the River Management Act has been passed in Massachusetts, so we have a lot of those controls statewide anyway. Um, so I, I, you know, I'd say generally speaking, you know, the, the impact of the designation itself is, is there isn't one on, on private landowners. All right. So, and then the other question is, you know, what, how would that impact the, the town's relationship with um, giant corporate dam owners? Um, and because, uh, you know, and I'm of two minds of that. And the first, the first one, you know, I, I forget what the name of the corporate successor is to Trans Canada that owns these things now. Um, but the Great, Great, Great River Hydro. There you go. Um, and you know, on on the one hand, you know. Evil multinational corporation that uses trade secrets to hide the sediment load and the amount that they're polluting. Um, uh, but on the other hand, since they've resumed power generation in the town of Conway, uh, they actually make a substantial annual payment in taxes to the town of Conway, and that is uh, that that helps the residents of the town of Conway. Much as I hate to admit it, it does. Um, so, you know, on the one hand, we'd like them to have to, uh, to you know, is, is there any chance that this gets to wipe away any of those, uh, the, any of the, the, the things that have crept up over the past decade that allows them to hide their, their, the amount of pollution and the amount of sediment load that they, that they put into the river? Um, that's a complicated question, but I think, again, having... Um, Having a committee of, of representatives from the communities gives communities more of a voice in, in working with large corporations like that, first of all. Having the designation gives you a little bit of something, some weight behind your voices as well. And, um, you know, we would, we're planning to reach out to the power companies, to Great River Hydro and, and the others um, that operate the dams to tell them, you know, what we're proposing here. Um, the designation itself would not impact those pre-existing dams in any way. They would continue to operate as they do now, and, and those sections of the river would not really be eligible for designation. So the dam itself, any any impoundment behind it is not really eligible because it's not a free-flowing section of river. Um, in terms of your relationship with them, I, I don't think it would change things. It just might give you a little bit more leverage um, to, to work with the companies. Yeah, that's good. Um, uh, and then the other thing too, you know, one of the one of my long term goals for the South River would be to see a dam removal. We have a, a an old dam, a high that's called the High Dam, um, and and if not for that dam, very close to the mouth of the Deerfield River, um, the, it would be a wild river from, for, you know, for for twenty miles or something like that. Um, and the, but that there is a massive sediment load involved. 
uh, the, the, it, 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 but the, the, you know, the state has, uh, has been accumulating a fund for dam removal for several years now that really nobody's accessed, but we're just a tiny little town and we can't even contemplate doing something like that on our own. Or, um, so, you know, is, it, is there any chance somebody would come along and take on a project like that for us? Well, there is, I think, actually. I, I can tell you that on the Westfield River, the, the Wild and Scenic Committee took on a, a pretty major dam removal project. Um, I believe it was in Beckett and, and got state funds and, and had the, you know, the resources and staff to kind of oversee that project and, and got it done. Um, so I, I think that you know, this, this, it's a group that could have lots of efforts and activities that come out of it. And um, typically you have, um, you know, some resources to, to have some professional staff that are helping to support that group as well. Hmm. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Okay. That's a great question, Phil. I hadn't thought of getting rid of that dam. Yeah. Doesn't do anything anymore, or else put it back in service, or else put it back in service. One or the other. We tried that. Yeah, Erica, how about you? Anything? No, uh, -uh. I'm, I'm good. So, so I'm not hearing a lot, a lot of pushback. So I am going to make a, a motion that we sign their uh, letter to support. Um, support their project. I mean, we could say this, you know, the letter says support evaluating segments of the Deerfield, um, but that we, that we sign this letter that we've all read. Yeah, uh, second. Yeah. Yeah, me too. Uh, yeah, thanks guys. Uh, I can't, you know, I, I, I don't see what the downsides are. Um, well, thank you all. Really appreciate it. Thank you. The things that you never see the downsides on are the things that never happen anyway. I don't know, well, I don't know why. I don't know why. We're well, so dysfunctional as a country. We will, we will keep you informed about our progress with this. And um, ultimately, you know, we, we'd probably like to find um, a community representative to, to work with us on this, but that's a little ways down the road uh, before we, we get to that point. Great. But thanks a lot Thank for your support. That. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Thanks for your time. Yeah. Thank yeah. you all. Appreciate it. Be well. Bob, good seeing you. Take care. Yeah. Okay. okay. So, Tom, are you going to talk to us about the employee handbook? Uh, yes. This is just formalizing the discussion we had last time um, to insert the words and any other subsequent approved leave. Um, in the section uh, talking about um, when the town might want to uh, try to get back uh, some benefits money. Um, the discussion was that we had, uh, uh, we, we, we were considering uh, if, an, if an employee went on FMLA leave uh, and then uh, wanted or needed to extend that leave for any reason, um, would that be sufficient cause for the town to to claw their their uh, to to ask for the um, the um, money that that we'd given them for benefits back? And the general sentiment was, no, as long as it was um, approved leave after FMLA, that the town would not um, try to get that that money back. The, the original wording was a little ambiguous and adding that just those few words and any other approved subsequent leave um, would, would I think, go a long way in clarifying this for employees who, who might need to take additional leave after their FMLA was up. Great. So, so, so uh, a, a, a way to put it into the handbook or is there more that has to happen? Well, I'd like a vote on it, yes. Sure. Thank you. Any other issues? Erica, Phil, no? No, I think that's exactly what we discussed. Yeah, that yeah. was great to last time. Yeah. yeah. So I'll uh, make a motion that we uh, approve adding that language to the employee handbook for family medical leave. 
Yeah. So I, I'm going to take that as the second, Phil. Yeah. All right. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and and we all hi. Hi. Yeah. So You're so formal. Well, well, you know, somebody's going to look at this someday, you know, so you never know. Um, I'll make sure to insert the, uh, that we insert the uh, language into the motion. Thank you. <laughs> good. Uh, and how about an update on what's going on with 69 Main Street? Um, well, I have some things I'll, I'll say for later, but uh, for now, I'll just say that um, Kitchell Lee did sign the agreement and he is starting the appraisal process. He should have something for us in probably three to five weeks. Okay. Anybody else have anything they've learned in the last two weeks? No, I think you might be jumping the gun on the executive session and that we're going to need to know what Kitzel says first before we can do anything, but um, might be better off in two weeks to do that or whatever, but. No, well, won't take long to talk about it then. How about the budget update? Uh, yeah, I just wanted to mention that we, um, uh, we are in an even better position than we thought. Uh, we have about a 94% uh, tax pay rate so far, and that uh, absolutely tracks with previous years. We're, we're, we're right where we should be. Um, we do expect some more to trickle in, and we always have some that doesn't, and we have to, we have to uh, um, uh, send some reminders and that sort of thing. So uh, FY21 is looking uh, unexpectedly good at this point. Uh, and I just wanted to uh, bring that up because I, I did get that information from the tax collector. And uh, that's great news for 21. 22, of course, is still a black hole. A lot depends on whether or not uh, states and cities and towns get any uh, relief from the uh, federal government. But, um, you know, that's going to take uh, the next few months before we see uh, if there's going to be any forward movement on that. Oh. Certainly better than we expected. That's great. Uh, how about items not anticipated? I think we have one. Yes. Uh, hold on a second. Um, so this this is uh, what I what I forgot what I wanted to say earlier on. Um, but this definitely counts as not anticipated. So your frontier and your you know, uh, your frontier regional and all the four elementary schools, including Conway Grammar. Uh, the state just chose us to participate in phase one of the state's antigen testing program, the Abbott Binax Now Testing Initiative, sponsored by the state government at no cost to us. Um, it's a rapid testing uh, thing that they bring to us. Uh, we'll be able to test symptomatic students, staff, and employees with results within 15 minutes. Mm. Um, this type of quick turn will help us identify infected individuals and their close contacts quickly to help stop any potential spread. Um, it's the only, uh, not, not very many schools at all were accepted into this phase one pilot and the tests are expected to be released to us around December 1st. So. They're only testing symptomatic students, staff and faculty. Bill? Um, well, I imagine once we have all the tests, we can test whoever we want. Okay, I guess that was my question. I, mean, I would assume that at, if, a, if, a, if someone was symptomatic, they wouldn't be at the school in the first place. Yeah. Yeah, um, I, I do know we, we need to do a meeting soon to work out languages for parental consent and all that stuff, but-, um, but Do uh, they look for approval by a select board or by the school committee or- I don't think so. This is like a state thing directly to the schools, but, uh, but it's, it's definitely a really good thing. And yeah. it was based on their, the state's own, they, their own uh, assessment of how schools are doing with the COVID and the, their assessment that we're doing well with it. So. And will the test be administered by Conway staff or by outside personnel? No. Well, the Conway school nurse, uh, nurse Meg, um, is also the head of the frontier nursing thing and is also a Franklin County 
uh, the right. health collaborative, whatever. So we we really are lucky in that regard. It's kind of like one stop shopping, and she's got all the the certifications and everything. But so, and, so but she, she also has she also has the text numbers and can like bring the whole cavalry right. like that and all that. So. So, I mean, no, I guess my question is like, she's going to be administering the test. It's not like outside people coming into the school being like administering right. tests to children. Okay. Right. 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 Yeah. But, yeah. So, um, so that's, that's really good. So they choose one of the schools that probably has about the lowest COVID rate in the whole, in, <laughs> in, in the, in the state. We win. Well, then <laughs> they can send yeah. us three tests, you know, that would cover us. Or something. Free is good. No, no, free is very good. Yeah. Okay, Tom, how about, oh, did, Tom, did you have uh, an un, non-anticipated anything? Uh, yes, we got a very kind offer. It might be a little difficult to accept. Uh, someone's just cut down a 22-foot white spruce uh, on their property and was offering it to the town for some sort of holiday tree. And, you know, it, it's, it's very generous. It, it's a wonderful um, gesture. Uh, I spoke with our highway superintendent about it, um, who uh, was unsure that we would actually be able to mount it. Uh, and there were also questions about where it might go and how it would be decorated. Uh, but I did want to bring it to the board um, uh, because it was such a, you know, very thoughtful um, uh, very, very thoughtful uh, offer, um, uh, and and that was uh, that was from uh, Wendy uh, Stamen um, on uh, uh, sort of on the corner of uh, Reed's Bridge and uh, Shelburne Falls Road. Do um, you think the school so, would have any interest in it, like putting it in the gym and? Do you, do you remember we have a decorating a tree decorating committee? Do you remember that they came and and they talked to us last year or the year before and we gave them another hundred dollars for decorations, which was the first uh, one. Yes. And wasn't that um our, uh, that that, I mean, that goes on the tree that's the the living tree in the triangle. So right. Uh, and and they actually got a, a volunteer uh, with a bucket truck to come and and help decorate it. Yeah. See that. Um, so, see if see if but, they. But I don't know how we would how we would stand it up, and and the 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 business of retrieving it from its its location and transporting it um, would involve a certain amount of work as well. Um, yeah. And uh, I just did want to mention it because it was such a such a nice offer. Mm. Yeah. I think we should politely decline and, and thank them. But, but I, I, I mean, the school is the only, the gym is the only building I know where we could stand something like that up. Yeah. And, and yeah, we're, we're not quite sure exactly how we would do that. Yeah. That sounds yeah. complicated. Sounds like, like sounds like something fire marshal would not like. Sounds like something fire marshal would not like. No. So, are, are you looking for a decision by the board, Tom, or or do you want more than this? I, I think I can communicate the discussion. Great. How about an update? Ah, uh, yes. Um, in uh, in committee news. The Massachusetts Association of Conservation Commissions has awarded a certificate of achievement to Grace Larson for completing eight units of its training program. They sent a very nice letter, and uh, it's uh, it's a great thing for our, our committee members to take on that level of uh, commitment. Uh, Hope Crolius got an unexpected opportunity to relocate, and so will be leaving town and the Agricultural Commission will need to oh. elect a new chair. Tikva! Tikva! Uh, I, uh, I did submit a reserve fund transfer request to the Finance Committee for the customary select board stipends, which the chair received sympathetically. <laughs> um, so I, 
there, there will have to be a meeting of the committee and a vote uh, in order for that to move forward. Uh, working with other committees, I've changed the current Zoom account the select board uses to a general account for the town, which should save some money. Uh, so far, the committees using or wanting to use Zoom are the Planning Board, the Cable Advisory Committee, the Newsletter Committee, the Finance Committee, and the Board of Health. Um, of these, the Board of Health and the Newsletter Committee have some scheduling conflict. Um, the town should probably add a second account at some point. I know uh, uh, Veronique is bringing this to the Board of Health. Um, these may be reimbursed by CARES money only through the end of December and realistically through the end of November because we have to submit um, uh, before we'll get the invoice for the uh, December um, usage. Um, it is still uh, quite unclear whether the HEROES Act or another federal relief package will be successful in the coming year. If it is, um, we'll be sure to submit for that. In uh, departmental news, work on the highway maintenance building has been set back by two factors, the pandemic and the technical school. The school lost its electrical instructor, who has not yet been replaced. And the pandemic has forced practical projects to be postponed. While this is a disappointment, it's not a major roadblock. The committee anticipates going out to bid for electrical work after the floor has been poured. Since there was no need to hurry for the electrical work, the committee is now thinking with colder weather coming that it should wait till spring. Having trucks and equipment in the shed is enough of an improvement so that the highway superintendent is not overly upset with the delay. Um, I just have uh, an update that I basically just gave on, uh, on the uh, revenue situation and the tax collections. And uh, also we just received two day, today two letters from Ken Pleasant about either side of his property. I know the highway superintendent has a useful perspective on the item, so I've asked him to look at the letters and provide some comments for your next meeting. And that's it for that. Yeah, the, 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 the Pleasants didn't meet with me about that. I did ask them to send that all that information in so that the select board can consider it and so that, um, and that if, 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 you know, basically what they're proposing is an even swap of square footage along a proper along the property line there um or from what i understood there it was an even swap but um uh, still that would be something that would have to be on a warrant and town meeting would have to approve it and um etc the select board would have to approve it so uh they they needed it to be in writing before we could consider it so um but that's about it t t tom is the board of health doing a zoom meeting tonight I, I I don't know if they do. Um, it's Veronique that would have set that up from the account that she set up. All right. Uh, we should move along, check. and maybe you can make that meeting. Uh, let me check the calendar. Okay. I don't want Phil to miss a meeting, you know. <laughs> the, calendar, the calendar on the website for the, the Board of Health item does not include an agenda or contact information. Right. Hmm. The concerns of the select. No, I, 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 I can check their, their posting outside uh, when we're done and, and right. let you know. Thanks. Yeah. Any concerns? Um, so Tom, how about mail? No. Any announcements? I have none. Uh, I would just urge you to take advantage of Erica's kind offer to um, transmit any messages you might have to Representative McGovern. Yeah. 
or Joe Comerford or Natalie Blay. I don't know who's going to be there tomorrow, but. Um, Natalie, I know last year and, and Jim McGovern both walked the entire way. Uh, yeah. I don't know about the rest of them, but it was. Well, I'll way. be there from Northampton to Deerfield at least tomorrow. That's what I've committed to. So um, uh, see if I, anything comes up. <laughs> I, I do know that uh, the brief little bit that I heard this uh, today, they uh, they were acknowledging the Conway Grammar School for marching outside of it. And sure. they, they, yeah, they, that they was mentioned they mentioned Nurse Meg. They mentioned JoJo. Um, so that was really cool. Yeah, that was, it was sweet. That's great. Next meeting would be next uh, uh, Monday, two weeks. Uh, oh, that's, that's uh, listed here. Sorry, De December 7th. December. Yeah, the agenda was, the agenda had a boo boo about that. Yeah, December 7th, 6 p.m. by Zoom. And are, do we still need to go into executive session? Um, yeah, well, we have two items. Yeah, okay, um, so. But, but, but neither of them are, um, are particularly pressing. So, so uh, in, in deference to Phil's wanting to get on the Board of Health call, uh, we, can, we can not do that till next time. No argument. I just here. urge you to take, to take a look at the minutes. Um, and uh, and uh, let, let me know if you, anyone has any questions. Okay. Well, on that then, I will make a motion that we adjourn. Thanks. Yes. Good. Aye. Yes. Thank you. Uh, Phil, stay, Phil, stay on for just a second. Let me, let me right. see if there's information. Thanks, Tom. Thank you, everyone. See you in two weeks or sooner. Okay. See you. See ya.